So it's Dumbly of the Week. Charlie, that's our favorite show. You know, this week, not a lot of news has happened. No. Like last night. Yeah. All the news. Yesterday was a giant news <laughs> dump. Specifically after 5 p.m., we got a giant news dump last night because we got the Tucker interview. And then coincidentally enough, we got the Biden special counsel documents Report. decision report last night and so that was it i'm telling you turns the, out everything you guys were thinking about biden is true <laughs> there's no <laughs> there's no reason that they released that at the same time as the tucker interview no. that was a pure coincidence they yes. weren't trying to divide the rights time amongst two different uh big things and then biden comes out and does a press conference last night to prove to everyone says I don't know things. That he could do the thing. Mm. And so he comes out. I think he once again does more harm than good, which is what happens every time he speaks, which is why he doesn't speak all that often. And um, why we were not going to see debates and why he doesn't do very many press conferences, because a lot of times there's uh, quite a few gaffes. When that happens. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, it's dumb bleep of the week. I do, see, I do see Michelle Obama trending on Twitter currently. <laughs> so the conspiracy is she's going to be the the nominee. It did sort of seem so like, we'll see. it sort of seemed like Biden uh, kind of got torpedoed yesterday uh, with the special counsel report and then him going out and doing a press conference, which what, what he thought was going to be defending his position, that he knows what's going on. And I think the people who are running him know for sure that every time he talks, it just gets worse. And so maybe we will see him pushed out. I saw 25th Amendment trending last night on X. Uh, what's up to all the people on X, by the way? We hardly ever stream live to other platforms, but we're doing this today because the special a courtesy, a special counsel report on a dumb bleep of the week Friday deserves a special live stream, I think. Mm. And so on dumb bleep of the week, if it's your first time listening, the Fed Haters Club, they throw in a bunch of submissions for things that were really dumb that happened over the last week. I throw in some submissions, some people on uh, X throw in some submissions, and then we gather those all together, as many as we can. We go through them on Dumb Bleep of the Week, and then the people in the live group, the Fed Haters Club, they get to vote on which one was, in fact, the dumbest thing that happened this week. We only have seven today. Mm. And that is because likely the first one is going to take up like half of the show. Okay. So that's why we only have seven today. The first one, if I can get everything up here on screen, are you ready to actually get in? I'm ready. Dumb bleep of the week. Number one is just going to be called and the voting channel is going to be called Biden documents. So we get this release from the special counsel. We get this report. CNN says scathing special counsel report finds Biden willfully retained and disclosed classified information, but he will not face charges. Mm. <laughs> so, which is typically how we do things uh, for Democrats. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, her, which is the special counsel's last name, I guess, laid out in detail how Biden mishandled classified materials, writing that FBI agents discovered materials from the garage offices and basement den in Mr. Biden's Wilmington, Delaware home. The materials included classified doc documents, including some marked at the highest top secret sensitive compartmented information level related to military and foreign policy in Afghanistan, as well as notebooks containing Biden's handwriting. Uh, hers report also included photos depicting various parts of Biden's homes, materials at issue in the investigation and other relevant scenes over the years. Uh, while the investigation, this, this one reads a little weird if you're confused by it. Don't worry, Biden is too. While the investigation revealed that Biden willfully retained and disclosed classified materials, the investigation showed that he willfully retained these materials after leaving office. Hers and report, disclosed them. Yeah, Hers report says his team concluded that the evidence didn't support prosecuting the president. The primary reason for that determination was that nothing proved a willful intent by Biden to illegally hold on to classified information. The special counsel also raised Biden's age and memory in explaining why he didn't bring charges. Mm. The first line of this says that the investigation revealed that he willfully retained and disclosed the classified materials. The second sentence says that the that nothing proved a willful intent by Biden. Yeah. <laughs> they it's seem like, like hey, they're we, kind of opposing. I don't know. 
We have evidence that you broke the law. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Willfully. Yes. <laughs> we found that you willfully broke the law. But that evidence doesn't support charging you. <laughs> but that evidence doesn't support that you willfully yeah. did it, even yeah. though we showed that you willfully did it. Now, look, whether or not you think a president should be charged because they have, they can, they hold on to classified information, or whether you not think information should be classified to begin with. Yeah. Or whether or not you think Trump should go to jail or not go to jail, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's this whole thing about the equal protection. Double standards. It's the double standards. Mm -hmm. Of course, everyone on the left is not going to call for his, you know, pri imprisonment like no. they do Trump. Mm -mm. Uh, so that's the that's the actual only issue I have with it. And people on the right are going to call for him to get the same treatment as Trump, even though they didn't want Trump to get the treatment that Trump is getting, even though they wanted Hillary Clinton to get the treatment that Trump is getting. Yes. The how you think this should be prosecuted comes down to how you feel about Donald Trump, essentially, or whether or not you are a Republican or a Democrat. My thing is, as a libertarian, I don't think we should have classified documents. <laughs> I think some things sh do nope. need to be classified. Transparency. But I do think that they over-classify things, that there are too many things that they deem to be classified. I think I think we should be transparent. I I. I understand that for sure, but I do think that there are sometimes your your operations when it comes to yeah. Defense. But my thing is, is like don't put it on paper. You know, you don't <laughs> yeah. think I can't yeah. secretly satellite phone call, you know, the lieutenant in the field and be like, hey man, you should move on this target. Why why have it on paper? No, I get that what? for sure. Here's the most. You still can't. You don't think you can move covertly? You probably can. Yeah. I think after a period of years or something, everything should be unclassified or you should be able to file to, uh, you know, be able to go into a dark room and see it. Some group should be able to something like that. I do think that what sometimes, group? yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, let's get on to the crazy part of this because we're in, in an election season. We're coming up on 2024 year of our Lord, 2024 and Biden is running for reelection. You would assume that people think he's also going to make it all the way through a second term. No one. Does anyone actually think that? No. Okay. Some of the some of the things that came out in this report, uh, I'm surprised they put it down on paper. It says what we already know. Like you can't be shocked by. Oh, I am shocked by this. No, everyone knows this. Everyone knows these things. But the fact that it's been written down and the fact that one of his defenses and why he's not going to get charged is that they don't think a jury would determine that he has a mental state of willfulness. willfulness or that he can actually stand trial when they look at this old elderly man who can't, uh, apparently, according to her, not H-E-R-H-U-R, -E according to her, couldn't pinpoint the year that his son Bo died. All he kept saying was that the wrong kid died over and over again. Doesn't even know when he was vice president. <laughs> Didn't know for sure when that was. Probably doesn't even know that he's president right now. <laughs> Some days I would say he probably does not. No. Yeah. Uh, so some of the language. Look, the dude clearly has dementia. Let's read a few of these passages here. Okay. Go ahead with uh, All right. the actual so document. Her, her, this is a special counsel saying, we've also considered that at trial, Mr. Biden would likely present himself to a jury as he did during our interview of him as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. That's how he presented himself in the interview with the special counsel. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't jack, jack him up on, you know, Adderall or something. <laughs> Go in there sharp as a tack. They might have died off. I mean, it said that they spent, you know, several hours yeah. doing this. So, Based on our direct interactions with and observations of him, he is someone for whom many jurors will want to identify reasonable doubt. It would be difficult to convince a jury that they should convict him by then a former president well into his eighties as a, of a serious felony that requires a mental state of willfulness. Now, what was his mental state during that time that he took these documents? He was probably in better shape at that time. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but they're just saying he's going to be sympathetic now. And you know, the, a lot of times they don't want to pursue a case where they think the jury's not going to convict the person. And that's essentially what they're saying is that Biden's mental state would lead a jury to not convict them. And so therefore there's no reason for us to proceed with, uh, with yeah. this. Um, in his interview with our office, Mr. Biden's memory was worse. 
He did not remember when he was vice president, forgetting on the first day of the interview when his term ended. Biden said, this is a quote from Biden, if it was uh, 2013, when did I stop being vice president? (laughs) Come on, man. (laughs) And forgetting on the second day of his interview when his term began. And quote from Biden again, in 2009, am I still vice president? (laughs) (laughs) I'm Ron Burgundy. Guys, this is the... He did not remember even within several years when his son Bo died. And his memory appeared hazy when describing the Afghanistan debate that was once so important to him. Among other things, he mistakenly said he had a real difference of opinion with General Carl Eckenberry when in fact Eckenberry was an ally whom Mr. Biden cited approvingly in his Thanksgiving memo to President Obama. So Biden did not like the whole thing about saying that he didn't remember when his son Bo died. I don't know if I have the clip pulled up, but he, you know, in this press conference last night, he got emotional about it. And uh, the thing is... It's I don't sad. care. I don't. It, I mean, it is sad to see an old man do this, and it's yeah. and it's sad that his son died, and that you know those both things are sad. But the question is, during this interview, could he not pinpoint the year that his son died? Now he comes out last night and says, "I remember when my son died," and we go every year Memorial Day and do do this stuff. Okay, well, when you were talking about it, you couldn't pinpoint the year, and they say within several years of when your son died. That's just what happened. I'm sorry. That's just what happened. So you can get emotional about it and go cry on TV about it if you want to, but you're running to continue being the uh, president, commander in chief of the most powerful nation on planet Earth. Yeah. And so these little things do tend to matter, I think. And we, people with dimensions, we don't even let them have their own bank accounts. <laughs> okay. They can't drive, which he doesn't drive, but like. You lose a lot of liberties when you can't remember stuff. Mm -hmm. Typically, your family takes over, or sometimes the state takes over. Because Biden's been getting, you're extremely vulnerable. He's been getting a bunch of money stolen by this Ukrainian prince. He keeps getting emails from, you know, (laughs) been sending all kinds of money over there to him. Ukrainian prince. (laughs) Dude needs some checks cash for him. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Uh, In addition, Mr. Biden's memory was significantly limited, both during his recorded interviews with the Ghost Writer in 2017. And his interview with our office in 2023 and his cooperation with our investigation, including by reporting to the government that the Afghanistan documents were in his Delaware garage will likely convince some jurors that he made an innocent mistake rather than acting willfully. That is with intent to break the law as the statute requires. Mr. Biden's memory also appeared to have significant limitations, both at the time he talked to Zwanitzer, Zwanitzer, I guess, Zwanitzer, which is the ghostwriter. Mm hmm. As evidenced by their recorded conversations, and today as evidenced by his recorded interview with our office, Mr. Biden's recorded conversations with the ghostwriter from 2017 are often painfully slow, with Mr. Biden struggling to remember events and straining at times to read and relay his own notebook entries. Now that was six years ago. (laughs) Yeah. Six years ago, before he ran for president. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I mean, if he's just straining to read, uh, to me, that's not a real big one. Like if I write something down in the notebook. Well, the I painfully can... slow part. Well, yeah. Yeah. Struggling to remember details. I and mean, we've all listened to the guy talk. It can get painfully yeah. slow for sure. We got one more here. All right. Given the intelligence and military officials present and the topics discussed at the meetings with Mr. Biden uh, recounted for the ghostwriter, Mr. Biden should have realized that his notes did or were likely to contain classified information, but taken as a whole, the evidence will likely leave jurors with reasonable doubts about whether Mr. Biden knew he was sharing classified information with Swanitzer and intended to do so. For these jurors, Mr. Biden's apparent lapses and failures in February and April of 2017 will likely appear consistent with the diminished faculties and faulty memory he showed in Swanitzer's interview recordings and in our interview of him. So the, he thinks a juror will likely conclude that he has diminished faculties and faulty memory. He's old, yes. Therefore, we conclude that the evidence does not establish that Mr. Biden willfully disclosed national defense information 
to his ghostwriter. Yeah, because he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, now I, uh, just to clarify. Imagine if he like launched a nuke. Be like, well, he didn't know <laughs> that that button. In his defense, <laughs> you know, he was just hitting zero a bunch of times. He didn't realize so that was not, still the code, you know. So he's not responsible. Yeah. Now this, uh, this dumb bleep, which we're, you know, we're still on number one, but we only have seven today. Um, I, I think of it to, to be more about Biden's diminished mental fac faculties and the fact that this is likely a big reason he's not going to get charged with anything and the fact that he's still running for re-election and the fact that people on the left are still defending this and acting like this whole idea that he doesn't know what's going on, this whole idea that he's got dementia is just some crazy right-wing conspiracy. And what's weird is at the same time, at the same time we have this Tucker interview going on, which is going to be dumb bleep number two, but I wanted to bring it up now. At the same time we have the Tucker interview going on, where, where people on the left are complaining and complaining and making accusations that Tucker is just a propagandist, and that he goes there to give this fluff interview for Vladimir Putin, Putin, and he's nothing but a propagandist. He's not an actual journalist. He's a Putin pet. And at the same time, we're going to have a video here from what would be considered by these people to be actual journalists who are going to tell you that there's nothing wrong with, with Joe Biden's mental faculties, that his memory is just fine. In fact, no worse than anyone else. It's not worse than Donald Trump's, or it's not abnormal for someone in a deposition to do this because they bring up Trump saying, I do not recall. I do not recall is different from not remembering the year your son died. Those are not the same thing. I, yeah. Everyone knows I do not recall as a legal cop out. Everyone knows that. I plead the fifth. That's exactly what it is. I do not I recall. I plead the fifth. And so acting like, well, uh, Trump said I do not recall a hundred times. So clearly his memory is terrible too. Trump probably remembers. Do, pe do, people, <laughs> do people really think that everyone is so stupid that they think when someone says, I do not recall, they actually don't recall? You know, what and it I, is? I used to think that maybe people aren't that stupid, but I'm starting to think there's a lot of stupid people. <laughs> and it's maybe true. it's not their fault. You know, a juror would, a jury would come back and be like, well, you know, uh, Roberta was too dumb for her own good. I think, you know, Biden said last night, there's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell he dare raise that? And then he, he starts, he kind of gets close to crying and stuff like that last night. Uh, it's sad to see an old man remember that his son died, uh, you know, live on TV. And so that that's sad for sure. But he's upset that the guy raised that. Well, that's one of the reasons that you're not getting charged, Biden, because you clearly are losing your mind. You're clearly an 81-year-old man that probably has dementia. You know, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not diagnosing him or anything, but kind of seems like dementia, you know, that to yeah. me. So he goes on TV last night because he's upset, you know, yelling at times, like old people with dementia do at some times. You know, you ever gone to an old folks home and dealt mm -hmm. with old people before? Yeah. Yeah, they, they lose their cool sometimes. And so he came out and lost his cool sometimes last night. And uh, we have a video of him coming out to prove that he's just fine, where he says that the president of Mexico won't let emergency aid into Gaza. The conduct of the response in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip has been um, over the top. I think that uh, As you know, initially, the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I talked to him. I convinced him to open the gate. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. I've been pushing really hard. Now listen, that's fine. This happens sometimes. Trump did this with Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi not too long ago. Trump has uh, confused um, Hungary and oh, what's the other? I can't remember the Turkey, uh, but not in a press conference to prove uh, how sharp yeah, you are. That's where it gets ridiculous. <laughs> he's here to prove that he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> he's upset that people are saying he's not. Yeah. And then he comes out here and makes even more gaffes proving that this is why he doesn't come out and talk to people very often because it's an endless supply of gaffes at all times. But the left-wing propagandists 
are out there for you. Of course, you remember everyone's worried about Tucker. That's why I wanted to combine these uh, two things, number one and two. We're still on number I one. I wish somebody would just like ask a question, like, what year is it? <laughs> just a standard cognitive <laughs> questions, you know? Do a neuro, a quick neuro assessment. Should we have a cognitive test for people who want to run for president? No, I no, think you let the I, American people decide. I agree with that. Yeah. I think the American people should demand that people take that test. And I think that they should refuse to vote for someone who refuses to take that test. Or, and but that who they can use those, the test? That's the thing. Who administer, you know, how do they administer it? How do they say the questions? Uh, you would hope, I guess, it's like a standard test. Who funds the company that runs the who, test? Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, they should take the test. I don't know if it should be mandated by law that they take the test because then they're the people who mandate that by law are also going to be screwing with the test at the same time so but i would like everyone to take the test i would this brian j karem comes out and says now this is in response to biden's press conference last night now he stood he took questions he took responsibility he pushed back. Actually, he said that his staff are the ones who moved the boxes and he didn't know that the stuff was there. Yeah, that's not taking risk. He pushed back. He defended himself without belittling anyone. Except the staff. Except the uh, special counsel, too. Tonight showed us the greatest weakness and strengths of the Biden presidency. They're the same thing, by the way. He's good in front of a camera. His greatest weaknesses are his greatest strengths, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. He's good in front of a camera and he needs to show up more often. Exactly. That's what we found out. Okay, let's go to... If he shows up more often, it would be worse. <laughs> let's go to Rachel Maddow and some of those crazies over there on MSNBC and listen to a minute or so of this. Of course, they're providing some cover for Biden. The propagandists for the regime out here providing cover, acting like we're crazy for thinking that Biden has lost a step or eight of them. Yeah. Lost a lot of steps because now he goes through the lower steps on Air Force One. So he's uh, like only got a quarter of the steps he used to have. Okay. <laughs> he lost like 75% of his steps. Yeah. You know? Okay. Here's what they had to say. In that case. Well, yeah, especially this line uh, that the president quoted where the report refers to him as a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Uh, what is the word elderly doing there? Uh, and poor memory, what is the test of that? Might that be Donald Trump saying, I don't recall 400 times under oath in the same deposition? Is that a good test of it? Um, the, the idea that witnesses over a 40-year discussion, 40-year discussion, don't remember everything, or that mm -hmm. someone who graduates from college in June can't tell you where the diploma is in September, mm -hmm. uh, that seems to be a condition that, uh, that... Okay, just so you know, those are comparisons to him not remembering when he was the vice president and when, when his, his son, son died. died. Okay. Yeah. Same so, thing as losing your diploma. Yeah. Well, losing your diploma, <laughs> that's the same thing as <coughs> mishandling top secret classified documents yeah. in a box in your garage. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have any more responsibility for that than your average Joe and who doesn't know where their diploma is. Personally giving someone who doesn't have a clearance to mm -hmm. that information, that information. Yeah. When you're trying to, when you're getting him to write a memoir mm. for you, mm -hmm. telling everyone you're not gay. Here's a little more. <laughs> that this uh, special prosecutor doesn't understand in the human mind. Uh, so I, I'm going to be fascinated when I can get into uh, all these hundreds of pages to see what is it that makes you stress the lack of memory in this particular case. Uh, His son where you died. Have this completely cooperative uh, witness. <laughs> and he doesn't remember and there it. There has never been a witness under oath anywhere being questioned over a period of years of that witness's life where they don't say, I do not recall. It is impossible to ask witnesses questions where they answer will not be, I don't recall. He and never said, don't I don't get... recall, by the way. That's what he's saying. That's the point he's making. He didn't say, I don't recall. I guess he just messed up. on. They're not the same thing. Yeah, he that's said the, the wrong year. That's what we said earlier. Like, that's not, I don't recall. That's acting as if the people... He, like, hey, Nate, when did your son die? And you're like, I don't recall. That's a much different answer than 2009. And I'll be yeah. like, well, you don't have a son. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes, that is how that would That's go. That's totally different. <laughs> um, it's uh, it, the, the thing that bothers me is this guy, I don't remember what this guy's name is, acting like 
the us lowly idiots out here listening actually believe that when a witness says, I do not recall, that that means that they don't remember. Yeah. Everyone knows what I do not recall means. It means I don't want to give specifics because I don't want to go to jail. That's what that answer means. Yes. And you can't prove that I don't recall something. And so therefore you got no case if I said, I don't recall that. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Everyone knows that except for in the few instances where someone didn't actually, that is not the same as not remembering what year you were vice president or specifically what year your son died. Those are different things. All right. Let me see if there's Especially anything when else. You were, when you were vice president not that long ago. <laughs> that response, it just means you didn't af- ask enough questions. Can I, can I speak just on that? Because yeah. I had the same thought. It's fairly standard lawyering to advise people, even when in doubt or you think you might remember. If you can credibly say, I don't recall about something, that's a standard legal advice. And it has nothing to do with the age of the person giving the deposition. When you're under oath, you can't lie. If you do recall, you have to say that you can, but if you can't... Exactly. Well, that, that's the whole you point, right, Rachel? That that basically, because something. of those standards, uh, the extra burden that you don't want to get anything wrong means yes. you err on the side of saying, I don't recall, I don't remember, unless you really specifically do. And- that's, what, that's what was happening. There was just that extra burden for Biden. He didn't want to get anything wrong. Therefore, he said the wrong years. Because <laughs> he didn't want to accidentally say the correct year. Right. That his son died or the correct year that he got out of office as vice president. Yeah. There's a standard legal advice, Charlie. Exactly. You know, you say <laughs> the wrong years. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> My God. This okay. is the dumb boy. <laughs> you, you be surprised. There's a reason this is number one. And there's another one that's number seven also. Okay. But it's, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, okay. That's the end for number one. Uh, we're 28 minutes into the uh, episode now, so <laughs> I guess we should move on a little bit. Uh, Bill Crystal has had a couple things to say about Tucker doing this interview with Vladimir Putin. The interview came out last night. <clears throat> Charlie's watched some clips from it. I have watched. Uh, I didn't watch any specific clips. I'm just I'm an hour into the interview right now. We've made it up to World War One. I'm pretty sure in the uh, in the interview. Now he um, there's some great memes out there coming from this interview for sure because he starts like why did you invade ukraine well we have to start in the year 800 862 or something like that i don't yeah. know what year it is specifically yeah this is all number one just uh just so everyone in the group well, knows. now we're on number two now it's number two and it's going to be just a couple things said about the tucker interview i've watched an hour of it it was not a crazy softball interview he has pushed back on some things he did ask about that journalist uh, that's in prison there. He asked several questions about, you know, can you just release him to us? He can come home with us. He asked several times. Uh, people were talking about how Tucker wasn't going to ask about that and several other things. It seems like the people on the left were completely wrong about Tucker what he actually ask about. argued with him. Yeah. About giving that guy home. In addition, and Putin repeated himself probably four or five times. He actually seemed to be getting frustrated. So he kept saying, like, well, I'll repeat. Like this guy had classified information as well. He's not just a journalist. Let the special forces work it out. Basically they're in communication. You know, this is out of my hands. Yeah. Um, Essentially this isn't basically Putin was saying this guy is not just a journalist. He also said that talking about it in public like this made it uh, harder to make something happen. He was essentially saying like the fact that we're talking about this in public right now makes the negotiations harder. And so he was kind of trying to shut down those questions. I will say uh, in watching, I think Putin is a guy who likes to assert dominance and likes to emasculate the person that he's talking to. It was a very uncomfortable setup in an uncomfortable room. There is little things also that I recognized. Um, uh, this is stupid. This is really dumb. But I think Putin was was trying to set it up to try to have this dominance and make Tucker look uh, weak while he was talking to him. Several times Tucker would ask a question and he would say, no, no, I'm I'm answering this question right now. And he would say uh, at the beginning, he's like, well, do you want to have a show? Do you want to have a serious conversation? And Tucker gives this annoying, you know, kind of awkward laugh. Half an hour in, he asks another question and he's like, hey, I asked you at the beginning if you wanted to do a show or if you wanted to have a serious conversation. And just goes right back on to the year, the year 1736, you know, and and keeps going through that. Um, There's other weird stuff like even the seating position of the interview is awkward and I could feel Tucker's awkwardness in the way he was sitting. He looks weird in the way he's leaning in. Like he looks ridiculous during the interview. 
in my opinion. And Putin's kind of spread out. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'll kind of lay back. And Tucker's like, <laughs> doing this. He's got him set up on, this is this is stupid stuff. It doesn't matter for Dumb Bleat number two. He's got him set up on the left side. Tucker's always on the right side. Do you ever notice that you're better at doing things over to your left or to your right? When I want to listen to something and comprehend something, I put my right AirPod in. And if that's what I want to listen to. That's my bad ear. So actually I, I go to the left side. If I want to comprehend all the stuff out here, but also be hearing something that I don't have to pay that much attention to, I put it on my left. I literally comprehend better on my right. Mm. And I'm better talking to my right like this. I felt awkward the time we were over here and I was talking to you over here like this. Which is why we ended up moving because I wanted to set you up. And she this wanted position. to emasculate me. Yes, <laughs> the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like little stuff like this where you can yeah. just tell it was very awkward for Tucker. Here's what Bill Crystal had to say, Charlie, before the interview, uh, a few days before, and then just yesterday. Okay, Bill Lee Crystal. You remember he debated Scott Horton. Mm -hmm. Horton destroyed him yeah. for sure. He said, perhaps we need a total and complete shutdown of Tucker Carlson re-entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what is going on. That was before the interview. Um, Just a journalist going to a country to interview the president of a country that we're essentially at war, war yeah. with. And then he tweets uh, a couple days later, occasionally a political party does something admirable. This Dem is actually separate from the Tucker thing, but Bill Crystal said a couple dumb things, so yeah. I want to combine it real quick. The Democrats accepted immigration legislation they disliked, not to accommodate some woke constituency or interest group, but to help Ukraine defend itself against Putin's aggression. These Democrats put country first. <laughs> they, in the, yeah. the, the country they put first was Ukraine. Right. Just to, just to be clear. <laughs> no. They decided to take legislation they didn't like so they could give Ukraine money. Exactly. And that's putting country first. Exactly. But of course, that's in our war with Russia and to deter Putin's aggression. Mm -hmm. So Bill Crystal always wants to go to war. He loves the fact that we're fighting Russia right now. Uh, there's a couple things. Um, here's from this guy, Guy Verhofstadt. Um, Stad. Stad. Uh, CNN Business headline says, Putin walks away with propaganda victory after Tucker Carlson's softball interview. They probably wrote that a couple days ago. Yeah. And just released it last night. And he says... Carlson interview is the best thing that ever happened to Putin. America tomorrow will suffer from having him spreading lies unchallenged and unfiltered. This is how democracies die <laughs> by talking to people, by talking to people. That's how you, yeah, that's how you kill democracy. So the idea then to keep the democracy alive would be that you only allow one specific opinion to filter through the news and never mm -hmm. question those people. Because when people interview Joe Biden, Oh, man, let me tell you what. It's a hard-hitting interview, for sure. They push on him real hard, man. There's no way that they're helping carry water for, for the American regime. No, they're all, they're all propagandists. And the idea that interviewing the guy from another country is going to destroy our democracy, guess what? The democracy sucks if that's the case. Yeah, right. So The fact that like, you can't talk to you people. You can't hear someone else's point of view. Yeah, and then decide if it's wrong. <laughs> And that's how democracy dies, is if you are able to hear another person's argument on a situation. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds more like we already live in fascism, in my opinion. Yeah. It's my humble opinion. All right. Moving through quickly, then bleep number three now for uh, this is Chief Warren. Yeah, Chief Warren's got a got a couple things here. She's been concerned about inflation for a while, but now she's taken aim at a at this this new occurrence that it's her job to take care of. And that is something called shrinkflation, mm. which is what I thought you, is what it was called when I watched videos of Elizabeth Warren. Uh, <laughs> but instead, she's talking about Doritos and Oreos and stuff like that. And Real quick, did you see Rand Paul's tweet about, uh, basically is referencing Biden, but he said that he's going to build a wall with Gaza and make Mexico pay for it. And boy, are they going to be confused. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. <laughs> I saw that this morning. It was really good. Yeah, last night that was, was a big... On, don't believe number one. Last but. night was a big news night. Yeah. You know? You ever go for the last chip in the Dorito bag and suddenly say, whoa, there should have been more chips in here. You would be right. From Doritos <laughs> to say? Oreos to even toilet paper. These big corporations are shrinking how much they give us, but they're charging the same amount or sometimes even more. It's called shrinkflation. 
Corporate executives thought we wouldn't notice, but they're wrong. We noticed. Now, the corporations come back crying, oh, it's all because of inflation. Really? Then explain this. How is it that corporate profits have increased by 75% over the past few years? They are outrunning inflation by miles. We're not fooled. These giant corporations are inflating their profits. And okay. The whole time, Shit. all I can think of, did your fat ass eat the whole bag of Doritos and realize there weren't as many as there used to be? <laughs> so she has a, there's a supplemental tweet with this. Uh, by the way, when she talks about the corporate profits, they're referencing a study done of the top 100 companies uh, in the U.S. I believe it's the top 100 companies. A lot of those companies are tech companies that don't even produce physical products that people <laughs> buy anyway. Yeah. Okay. Like a lot of them have just. And also remember, we saw that it was for two quarters. Yeah. In one that, year. Yeah. That uh, we went. Was that last week? We talked and we're not about even that? taking into the account the amount of money they lost before that. No. No, you wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the only way that they're able to do this, by the way, is because of the increased money supply. Anyway, corporations are always greedy and they are always charging the most amount that they can charge and buy and still sell a high volume of products so they can make the most amount of money. They were doing the same thing in 2019 as they're doing right now. All that changed is the money supply, as we talked about last time. And all this is happening this. while people are getting <clears throat> food delivered to them for way more than what it would be to actually go to the grocery store and make your own food. Now she says less toilet paper on your roll. Trust me. I know this because like <laughs> I order Panera to be delivered and I know I could go to Panera for about 25 bucks. Yeah. But I get Uber eats to deliver it to my door. Cause I don't feel like going there because it's about a 16 minute drive. And that's mm -hmm. you don't want to do that. Who wants that's 32 no. minutes round trip. No. What Plus you... I have to get out of my truck and go in the store, you make movements with your body. And it turns out it costs me about $20 more for that entire service. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause you got the service fees By the and way, delivery Panera. fees and you got the tip. The tit? Tip. Tip. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Misunderstood you yeah. there. The T is silent on that. I got gotcha. you. Tip. <laughs> Less toilet paper on your roll. I want to know what kind of doctorate she has because I don't know how much toilet paper is it. Is it eight double rolls? Is it the same as 16 triple rolls or yeah. is it like 16 regular rolls and it's the same as like five triple rolls? I don't know what's going on. I don't on. have the toilet paper math degree <laughs> because I mean, that's I'm, high level you math. Know what? If we have to sign a law that says that they just sell toilet paper and tell you how many rolls there are without putting all this double triple roll stuff on the packaging, yeah. whatever, I'll support that one because yeah. I'm sick of that. You can't triple I'm roll like a double roll anyway. <laughs> It's already been doubled. How are you going to triple it? She says, we've got to crack down on it. How do you crack down on this? It's just inflation. It's still inflation. They can either sell you the same amount of stuff for a higher amount of money, or they can sh sell you a lower amount of stuff for the same amount of money, but it's still the per unit price of whatever is going in the bag that is changing. That's it. Per, so per Dorito. You're going to crack down on that? What does that mean you're going to crack down? What's the per Dorito unit price? I'm not sure. Uh, so that's ridiculous. And then, also, should we be eating Doritos and Oreos? No, no, we shouldn't be doing that. We should be eating potatoes. Uh, we're still on dumb bleep number three. Good Lord. We got to move it on after this. I wanted to make fun of this guy real quick. This is from a thing from CNN business. And they're talking about, by the way, they're talking about how McDonald's referenced in their latest earnings call that they're going to have to start lowering their prices, which is weird. Hmm. They said that they've noticed that consumers are not happy about their higher price menu items. I went to the dollar, the dollar menu. I ordered, you know, we got that order. It's a McDouble, it's a McChicken, it's a large fry, and it's a large Coke Zero. You know, back in the day, back in my day. Well, you couldn't get a large fry, small fry. Small fry? Yeah, for it a wasn't a large. For a little while, I'm pretty sure a large fry was a dollar. I don't know what McDonald's you're going to. That's, okay. That's well, right. anyway, back in my day, that would have cost like five bucks. Mm. Okay. The other day, it cost me 10 bucks to get that. Because it's the $2 close menu. To, close to $10. <laughs> it's not even that. It's almost a $3 menu now. It's crazy, man. Yeah. We got to crack down on this. <laughs> well, anyway, um, CNN And business, you get less fries in the box. They bring up this video of this dude talking about a hash brown costing $3. Which, by the way, the market's working because McDonald's noticed that the consumers aren't happy with this and they're losing consumers to other places and that they have to start lowering their menu item prices so they can get their uh, customers back. 
And so the market will start working. They'll find the point that is too high for people and they'll start reducing that price. This is price discovery right now for hash browns. This example this guy gives is really dumb. Key customers who make $45,000 a year or less. And a lot of people have taken to social media to complain about it. Is $3 worth of food. This, for reference, is a potato, which you can get four to five pounds of these for $3, $4. Something doesn't seem right here. Y'all supposed okay. to be- That's the only thing I wanted to play. Now, what I would like to ask that guy to do, we'll do an economics lesson real quick. Cut it up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you Chop go it up. You go ahead, Charlie. Put it in a mold. <laughs> spray some stuff on it. Spray the chemicals on it to keep it together. Fry it up. Mm-hmm. And then, then do your comparison. Make the salty goodness. Yeah. All that stuff. <laughs> Comply with USDA guidelines, stuff like that. Produce millions of them. And then tell me that a hash brown should cost its weight in a potato. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Do you know how many... Machines come together to make these things. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say people. No, I realized machine. that was totally off. <laughs> That's people before. But. but there's a lot of capital goods that go into buying those machines. And there, there's time. There's, Maintaining the machines. There's man hours. And Paying even some work. woman hours that are cheaper. Yeah. You know, that's fine. Um, but yeah, there's no reason that a hash brown should cost its weight in a potato. Because it's not. You're, Eat the potato, dude. Why don't you just eat the potato? <laughs> right. Just grab that and just crunch down onto it, man. Why are you going to McDonald's? Or why don't you do all the stuff it takes to make it and then tell me how long it took you to do that? And then tell me if it's worth it for you to pay a thousand other people to do that for you for $3. Okay. Yeah. There, there's that. There's that economics lesson for yep. you. Uh, number four. Oh, we can do this quick. The, another Tesla recall. These cars, Charlie, they're just too dangerous. Yes, they are. And after the Tesla owners just got their cars back from the shop after the last recall, you know, they had to go wait in line, take it into the dealership and get all the stuff fixed on their cars. And yet here we go again. They got to schedule an appointment at the dealership, the Tesla dealership, and yeah. drive it back in mm -hmm. and wait in line and wait weeks you're for their car Tesla to come back. You're saying Tesla doesn't recall. What happened? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Huh? Standard legal. <laughs> Tesla do doesn't recall. recall. They don't recall. That's if you could get a message to Elon Musk right now, <laughs> the retweet standard. this and say, I do not recall. <laughs> yeah. That would be uh, good. Um, Tesla is recalling almost 2.2 million vehicles, nearly all of the cars that it has sold in the US. Why, you may ask? <laughs> because the font size is too small on its instrument panel for its brake, park, and anti lock brake system warning lights. Yeah. So here's what actually happened. It's too small. Tesla did a saw. Tesla changed the font size, like I'm doing in the document we have open for show notes right now. Uh, currently, it's on 14. Now it's on 15. I just recalled our show notes right there. That was pretty crazy, right? Yeah. I just changed the font size. Now the way that they do these things is an over-the-air software update, and the font size changed. But they try to, I mean, you can go to the article and read about how this is potentially dangerous for people or whatever, all the models that are involved. But they do say that the report by the NHTSA uh, noted that Tesla is not aware of any crashes, injuries, or deaths linked to the incorrect warning light fonts. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, how did this happen? Well, I just couldn't read the fact that my anti-lock brake warning mm. system was flashing at me. And so I was squinting, staring at my dashboard, and what do you know? I, I ran over these kids. Yeah. You know? Ran over, right over That's them. The font size, sir. That, that darn font we size. We need a what recall. There's clearly an effort by people in the media to try and take down Elon Musk and to try and destroy his wealth because that is what finances. Because now Putin <laughs> is being interviewed you see, on X. You see how many people are going to die? Because yeah, Elon Musk it. took over X. You know that the old regime would not have allowed this Putin interview to be nope. spread on X. And now we're going to lose a war and hundreds of thousands of people and the entire Europe is going to be overrun by Russia all because Elon Musk bought X. The Axis is finally going to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, This was Hitler's plan the entire time. It was. Was for yeah. Elon Musk to create these cars and have all. This By the time. way, the recall is just a software update. Yeah, that's so it. you don't it's even have to turn your car over, in. overnight thing. All right, number five. Do you remember the time we talked about the mayor Tiffany Henyard, the one in Illinois? Oh, that, who's living the yeah, dream? Yeah, she's living man. the she high the life. Queen. Yeah, 
the queen. That's right. She's slaying out there in whatever the town's name is. Got a Gucci bag. $300,000 salary actually put forward a, uh, a, I would call it a piece of a bill or whatever. I don't know what you call it. A motion for her replacement if she gets voted out to make twenty five grand a year. Yeah, but if she wins, she still gets the three hundred mm. <laughs> for the next time. <laughs> yep. She's living it up. The best, the best mayor. Well, that that video went viral. People have been talking about her quite a bit. There are a lot of people that are upset about the lavish vacations and the high salary for the mayor. And it turns out. Why, Charlie, would you say people are actually upset about this? Because she's black. That's it. Yeah. They're upset it's because the only she's reason. black. It's the only reason. There's no reason. And on top of that, Charlie, one of the worst things imaginable is happening in this town. She's being criticized. By other black by people. By other black people who are criticizing her because she's black. Mm -hmm. This is inward racism. <laughs> All right, here's uh, some of her talking This is about when this. the narrative falls apart. <laughs> y'all should yeah. be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves. Dalton's difficulties got worse in recent weeks with water main breaks. Henyard blames oh. on trustee budget. This, that idea. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. Y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. This idea from her is so unbelievably racist in my in my opinion i know as a white guy that opinion doesn't matter and that opinion that i have is automatically racist but the idea that other black people should refrain from criticizing you purely on the basis that they are black and you are also black and therefore these black people could not possibly have a problem with their tax money going to pay your two hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars salary or your lavish vacations, or your billboards with your face on them all over the town. That there's no way that these black people could possibly think for themselves and think that this is an improper use of our money that's going to you. Mm -hmm. Their first thing that they should think of is, well, she's black, so therefore, I don't have any problem with her misusing my money. Not if only I that. If they I criticize her, that's racist. They should be ashamed of themselves. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves. Because a black woman's in power and you're black. Yeah. And you're criticizing me. I'm she, look at me. I'm also black. The frame we're paused on is getting y'all. <laughs> that's what she's saying right now. The audacity. The kahunas. <laughs> it's gross. It's gross is what it is. Yep. Uh number six. Okay. Man. We still got a couple things. I guess we're at 48 minutes, so we got some time. Mm -hmm. A little bit of time here. All right. This is uh, Ron De Sanctimonious, of course. Yeah, yeah. This is in the. I think this is in the Miami. This is a Herald, or yeah, I think it's in the Miami Herald. You remember the "Don't Say Gay" state? Oh yeah, of Florida. When you get there, you can't say gay. You can't. All right, forcing. Um, this is a headline here. Forcing Florida's homeless into monitored camps is called internment. Are we in 1933 Germany? So basically, Hitler. DeSantis. <laughs> same, same. Yeah. Same um, thing. Yep. For sure. Ron Hitler. Uh, basically the same thing as... Uh, he's got gas I don't chambers, see a I guess. Yeah. I don't see a difference same. between him, Hitler, or FDR. Yeah. There's not a fascist idea floating in the Republican airspace that Governor Ron DeSantis doesn't embrace. His uh, latest endorsement... we get endorsement, a fact check on that, please? <laughs> Bills advancing in the Florida legislature to enable rounding up the state's homeless and forcing them to live in monitored camps. A work in progress, DeSantis on Monday called the House bill and Senate bill, which prohibit city and county governments from allowing homeless people to sleep or camp on public property and rights of way. Digging the knife of callousness deeper, the measures allow property owners disturbed by a homeless person's presence to sue the local governments allowing it. All right. Almost none of that is true. Um, I did go through the bill. Even the last thing that this author said allows property owners disturbed by a homeless person's presence to sue. No, it actually shows that if a home, if a property owner's home value has been negatively affected by this homeless encampment, uh, then they can sue the government for damages to their property. Uh, it's not just like, oh, I don't like this over here. 
Uh, it's, it's actually if it affects, if it negatively affects your property value. Uh, the other thing, they make a big deal out of the fact that these are monitored camps. Um, the homeless people are currently sleeping in monitored camps because they're monitored by the local city, coun county police and city state officials uh, at all times uh, for crimes and anything else being uh, done. We're, all of it is monitored currently. Mm -hmm. uh, what they're asking for is for these areas to create a designated camping place encampment for homeless people like a designated area with fences and guards and, no, it doesn't say you have to put up fences gas chambers it doesn't mention anything about guards oh it would just be police that enforce the law yeah is what it would be wearing ss badges <laughs> they they're gonna be wearing some kind of desantis patch probably like a ds patch or something i don't know why ds you know it's all just d yeah. You put big D on RD. Mm -hmm. RD. Yeah. Okay. A little bit more. Yeah. With some uh, barbed wire around the fence. Mm -hmm. So these people can't get out. Yeah. And we're going to move them there by train. They take a train there. Yeah. yeah. It's free. This <laughs> DeSantis casts the legislation as ensuring public order, ensuring quality of life for residents, ensuring the people's property values are maintained. But he essentially seems to want to make homelessness. Illegal, touted as cutting touted as cutting edge. The idea is to keep homeless people far from the view of selfish people, offended and threatened by reminders of the plight of the less fortunate. Where would we dump the homeless in South Florida? In the bug-ridden Everglades. That's a question. I'm not saying exactly where oh, I put it. <clears throat> in the bug-ridden, yeah. Everglades. In the bug-ridden <laughs> question mark. Everglades. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I didn't get that on my teleprompter. I yeah. I didn't see the question mark. Um, it doesn't make homelessness illegal. It just says that you can't be homeless all over other people's property and public property and public right-of-way, sidewalks, stuff like that. It says that a city, a local municipality, is going to designate a certain area where you can go be homeless just fine. This all is where want. This is for homeless people. But you're not going to sleep on the sidewalk outside of this guy's business anymore. There's going to be a specific place where if you don't have a home and you want to camp somewhere, then you go camp here. I, I think this is a, I think it's a fine idea creating a designated place and the monitored ideas. But okay, so you like Nazi Germany then? <laughs> it's public property, you know. Yeah. Um, of course, they go through other people in camps. You know, the history of other people in camps, mm. just in case that was a necessary thing to put in this article. Yep. Uh, you can, <laughs> if you want to get the brief history of Hitler putting people in camps, and an even briefer history of FDR putting people in camps. Luckily, this article provided that yeah. for you. Um, I would, I did go through the bill, okay, because I was, I guess, I had a lot of time on my hands to go through this. A, a municipality may, in its discretion, designate property owned by the municipality to be used for a continuous period of no longer than one year for the purposes of public camping or public sleeping. A property designated for such purposes may not be located in an area where such designation would adversely and materially affect the property value or safety and security of other existing residential or commercial property. So there you go. There's the, that's the Hitler paragraph yeah. <laughs> in this whole thing. Yeah. Just so you know. They took that, the excerpt was straight from the, the Nazi manifesto. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. that, was a, that was a quote from Mein Kampf. Okay, number seven. Uh, this Bay Area school district spent $250,000 on a woke kindergarten program and its test scores fell even further. If you could imagine such a thing. Don't beat number seven. They paid 250K for woke kindergarten, and their test scores didn't go up. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> Hayward Elementary School struggling to boost low test scores and dismal student attendance is spending $250,000 in federal money for an organization called Woke Kindergarten to train teachers to confront white supremacy, disrupt racism, and oppression, and remove those barriers to learning. Because that's what the problem has been mm -hmm. this whole time. That's right. That's why test scores white, are down. White supremacy. The woke kindergarten you session. Could, you ask a kindergartner like what two plus two is, and there the answer is, well, I don't know because my great great grandparents were slaves. Yeah. So that's how in the world can I guess? Honestly, the students afraid to even say that because mm. of white supremacy. They can't say that, and so it's a tough, tough thing out there for kindergarten students. You know, dealing with all this racism. 
The woke kindergarten sessions train teachers on concepts and curriculum that's available to use in classrooms with any of Glassbrook Elementary's 474 students. That's the school's name, Glassbrook. The sessions are funded through a federal program meant to help the country's lowest performing schools boost student achievement. And this is where your federal DOE money, some of it, is going towards is 250K for a school to teach about white supremacy to boost student achievement. Mm -hmm. But two years into the three-year contract with Woke Kindergarten, a for-profit company, student achievement at Glassbrook has fallen, prompting some teachers to question whether the money was well spent, given the needs of the students who are predominantly low income. Clearly, those are racist teachers if they're questioning this. Racist questions uh, that Mm -hmm. they're asking for sure. English and math scores hit new lows last spring with less than 4% of students proficient in math and just under 12% at grade level in English, a decline of about four percentage points in each category. That's cra- I'm shocked that this didn't help. Mm. Efforts to reach the organization were not successful. They didn't respond for comment, okay? They had an automated response saying the founder, who also does the training, was recovering from surgery. I went through this place's website. This is literally some woke Karen who created a terrible website, laughably terrible website and got a quarter of a million dollar contract got a quarter million dollar contract to go do this she is the founder and she is the trainer and she also looks like is the person who built this website (laughs) it's a joke the whole thing is a a a sick joke what kind of surgery did she get (laughs) hopefully having a stick removed from her district officials defended the program last week saying that woke kindergarten did what it was hired to do (laughs) did it Get surgery. <laughs> did the st- she paid for her surgery at least, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. The distinct the <sighs> district pointed to improvements in attendance and suspension rates, and that the school was no longer on the state watch list, only to learn from the Chronicle that the school was not only still on the list but had dropped to a lower level. So the, <laughs> the, the, district, the district lied about <laughs> not being on the list. <laughs> We're not on the list. No, you're still on it, and actually, it's worse. <sighs> you you forgot to scroll down. <laughs> the fact oh, that you're still on the list. <laughs> uh, Costco brought up a good point. Um, he said, Nate, did you know that because uh, I've said this, sorry, I'm trying to get this thing out of the way. The name of the school, Republicans are going to send pipe bombs to the school now. This is something that the media is attacking libs of TikTok right now. And uh, Ch- Chaya Raddick, the one who run, is oh, blaming, doxing the blaming, school? blaming her for playing other people's videos and saying, Hey, look what this person said. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, some people are doing some crazy things, you know, a couple dozen people maybe have done bomb threats or different threats, stuff which like that. Which is wrong, by the way, which is don't a, do that. Which is a wrong thing to do because there are some innocent people at that school yeah. at least. And, uh, it's also, it's also wrong to do that, but yeah, it's a ridiculous idea that she should stop reporting on these things because crazy people do crazy things. At the same time, some education experts say struggling schools need research-based literacy and math interventions that ensure all students have the basic skills to succeed. Didn't all these teachers go to school to teach, to learn how to teach? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They do. They did. Examples of success include San Francisco's John Moore Muir, Elementary, which has tried a pilot math intervention program that has led to a more than 50% proficiency rate. Yeah, but how racist are the kids? Yeah. That's the bigger question. I know that they can, I know they're learning basic skills that's going to make the rest of their lives better and have better earning opportunities and just better livelihood overall. But are they racist? That's the bigger question Mm -hmm. that we need to ask here. I did go through the website last night. This is the headline page. No capitalization, because I guess capitalization is probably racist. That's right. Uh, So all power to the little people. Woke Kindergarten is a global abolitionist, early childhood ecosystem and visionary creative portal. Uh, The website is not any kind of, it's it's a joke. I'm telling you, it's a joke. I'm going to put the link to it in the show. Early education and pro-black and queer and trans liberation. (laughs) You can't even say a sentence. (laughs) Supporting children, families, educators, and organizations in their commitment to abolitionist early education and pro-black and queer and trans liberation. This is the uh, top of the website for Woke Kindergarten. Now they have these woke word of the day, okay? They've put so much... Now listen, they're on a shoestring budget. This one person got paid a quarter million dollars 
you can't be expected to create more than six vocabulary words for your students. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible, but these are the woke word of the days. Uh, even though I presume there's been more than six days uh, that have occurred since this was created ceasefire, which is uh, an order for people with power and places to stop fighting and use weapons to hurt large groups of people strike, abolish protest, anti-racist. And there's even a, uh, Spanish manifestation. <laughs> so I'm going to guess through all of my extensive Spanish language training, that that is manifestation. Mm. I know yeah, that's probably really far off, but um, that's probably what it is. Yeah, the website's ridiculous. Uh, there's some other really funny stuff on it, like poems uh, about the Buffalo shooting and the white supremacy that led to the Buffalo shooting, all kinds of stuff like that. Y'all, let's get the votes in. Let's get them votes in. If everyone's ready, go to the Dumb Bleep of the Week voting channel. And start clicking on whatever it is you think was the dumbest thing. We, to count them down, we got number one was the Biden documents thing. Number two was uh, well, some Biden's yeah, senile. That the entire situation, like mm -hmm. all encompassing Biden situation. Uh, number two was the Tucker interview. Number three, we had economics takes from Elizabeth Warren and from that three dollar hash brown guy with a potato. Uh, number four, the Tesla recall. Number five, the mayor, Tiffany Henyard. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves. Number six, DeSantis internment camps. And number seven, woke kindergarten. Get your votes in. Get your votes in.